Wait till we're live. Okay. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining. This is Essence of Medicine. Today, we're going to be talking about how to prevent spine surgery. I'm Amanda Armagos. Thanks, I'm live. Melissa Haber. And I'm Dr. Bossi for Essence. So preventing spine surgeries. First, let's find out um, what do we what do we mean by that? So, um, Alyssa, uh, how many spinal uh, surgeries are performed in the United States annually? Oh, geez, you know I don't have that number. Quite a few, though. I would assume that one point six two million spine fusions each year. And that's just fusion. That's not even the old. I'm so time. proud of you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. a lot. So I was yeah. still right. Yeah. A lot. A lot. Because by the time you're 50, what percent are you? Well, what would we say? At least 70% of people have back pain or some sort of back pathology, okay. spine pathology. Yeah. By the time people are 70 years, 50 years old, they have 70% likelihood that they have spine problem. By the time they are 60 years old, they are have 95% likely to have spine problem. By the time it, it's anybody is in the United States is 70 years old, they have only one to 2% chance of not having spine problem. Thanks God, we don't have to treat all of them. Now, but once we put those numbers in perspective, then all of a sudden 1.6 million is not that big because we, are about, we have about 400 million people in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and considering that people are getting really old these days, you know, it's just rare that uh, you know people die below fifty. It's extremely rare. Yeah, but also when you're really old, you're less likely to get the surgery. That's one of the things that I always mention when I bring up that one point six two. Mm -hmm. That's sure. just the approved spine surgeries. A lot That's of people. Great point. Yeah, a lot of times, a lot of our patients. Are turned away by other surgeons because of their age or especially their bmi is a weight. huge one yep their bmi Mor morbidities comorbidities mm -hmm. even just having some you know diabetes or having some copd not being able to be intubated mm -hmm. or under anesthesia for long periods of time absolutely that's a fabulous point even in the last mm -hmm. what 10 15 years i'm sure that number has gone crazy well just yesterday i saw a patient I did my first surgery on page, that patient 10 years ago when the patient was eight years old. And uh, he was very fragile then because uh, nobody wanted to do surgery for that patient and patient couldn't walk and he was deconditioning. Mm -hmm. By the way, that's the father of a chiropractor who refers a lot of patient to me by now. But more or less, he could not walk. Nobody wanted to do surgery on eight year old. Alyssa, what happens with the eight year old person when they quit walking? What happens? Oh, they decondition even faster. It's like oh, almost it exponential. It's it's not just a slow decline. It's almost you reach that point of no return and you plummet. It's it's devastating actually to witness in person. If and this ever... patient was actually ten years ago was uh, deconditioning. Now, there is a reason we can we could do that surgery that other people cannot do because our surgery is much less uh, invasive. And uh, we did that surgery 10 years ago. He went on for seven years. He actually did quite well. And uh, he was pain-free, he could walk, and he loves to walk and do things. <laughs> and... He went another seven years. I took a testimonial. I will put it online. Please, Amanda, make sure somebody attach it to this uh, podcast. And then, but I did not make him younger. So after seven years, he had another surgery. He did still well. And now five years, four years later, he's coming back because he has the same problem. Um, what does that mean for the spine? That you can... Fix a problem, but you don't stop aging. The spine keeps getting older, just mm -hmm. like you. <laughs> yeah. Now, for us to understand what aging of the spine is, we have to understand um, what, um, you know, what, what is aging? Amanda, what is aging? Um, aging is natural. It's just your body 
um, I guess you could say decondition. I don't know, not really deconditioning, but your body's getting less young, less mobile. Things are going to hurt more. Yeah, well, in but when you're yeah, like, uh, the, what is the difference between the, your grandmother when she was young and when she's not young now? What is that? She's much slower. She's in a lot of a lot more pain. Things take her a lot more time because she's in pain. Yeah, like her shoulder hurts really bad, but that then that limits a lot of the things that she can and can't do. The cycle that you just explained, we start to see a lot mm -hmm. with the older you get, you know, it only takes one domino effect to start to mm -hmm. spiral and, you know, you start to have pain and then you stop walking, then you start to gain a little bit more weight. And then we start seeing different medical history start to come up again. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Oh, I hate to say that, but our body is a machine, no different than your car you're driving, Amanda. How old is your car? You love your car. How old yeah. is eight years old so huh. what's the difference between the car that's uh, yeah, when it's now eight years old and the car when you uh, just mm -hmm. got it well i guess mine's 10 10 now she's 2014 wow 10 years old car yeah and so what yeah. is it? <laughs> time flies well yeah. i um i mean i've been in a couple accidents so there's a few and so are people exactly so her um right side front door is a little bit noisy when you open it just like sometimes oh, maybe and, yeah, and so, so are I, some joints and so are some right joints yeah she, she's still you know moving as fast as she always has she's not really slowing down but she has had surgery I spent three thousand dollars <laughs> last year fixing something i don't funny. know i don't know what it was but she completely stopped working so humans are like cars sometimes they need surgery <laughs> and then this is when i wait for dr abasi to hit us with a are you still or do your cars have the same set of tires on than you originally no they do not mm -hmm. and and i have efforts that i make to prolong the life of my tires just oh, like humans thing. have to make efforts to prolong the life of their spine. Like I have two sets of tires, winter and summer. So obviously when you have two sets of tires, you're using each set less. And I would assume that the snow tires you put on are used for a reason. They yeah. allow your car to not work so hard during the winter and keep yourself safe and Yeah, that's accidents. true. Yeah, my snow tires are softer, so they... um work with the snow better i don't really understand I it don't but cars either yeah but yeah. it works no but that's a good analogy between the disc of a spine spine made of bone disc bone disc mm -hmm. they're interposing seven in the neck 12 in the chest five in the lower back and those the discs literally separate two bone against each other the same way the tire separate the car against the road now mm -hmm. why do tire go bad there are three reasons Amanda, why does the tire go bad uh, ever? Why? Well, normal wear and tear, mm -hmm. your tires start to wear a little bit and get more smooth, but also... That's the aging process. That the, yeah, meaning that, you know, you drive a tire long enough, it will have wear and tears. That's like a human. You can't avoid that. Mm -hmm. There's not yeah. much you can do about that. Friction yep, doesn't yep. You cannot stop aging. You cannot... Well, there's only one way to stop aging. is dying young. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. Um, or you can run over a nail and then because how you use your car, meaning that if you drive your car on sharp stones or a on a construction zone holes of Minnesota. Yeah. And if you if you drive it in a dangerous areas, like people who do pro uh, professional athletes who do, you know, like high level their joint is all their joint, not only their spine, is 10, 20 years older than they are. Mm -hmm. So that is like you drive on sharp nail. If you or do you drive in your area, there are sharper material that are more likely to injure your tire. There's one more reason. What's that? Uh, the car itself gives out faulty tires i'm trying to well, think actually that has happened to my sister one time she got her brakes done or something and oh. her tire fell off of her car when she was driving it well that is as well as something to do like some additional thing happens in your life that you deconditioned and everything falls apart oh. and so on. no i'm talking about the disc itself and tire itself 
there's one more reason, and as a matter of fact, that's a major factor why a tire or a disc goes bad. Some tires are better than the others. Just the quality of the rubber, or the content genetics, of the tire itself. Yes. Yeah, genetics, genetics, what you were, yeah. the quality yeah. itself, I guess. So, what, what kind of tires do you have, Amanda, on your car? Wow, well, no idea. I could not tell you. I looked it up, actually, one day. It is high-quality tire that you have on your car. Okay. It naturally will last longer than somebody, another no-name tire that they haven't spent a lots of a lots of effort to make high-quality rubber and so on. And discs are no different. I hate to say that not all people are equal, at least not in medicine. You have good heart, you have bad heart. You have good disc, you have bad disc. You have mm -hmm. good bone and you have bad bone. And you have a huge spectrum of that. So genetic, aging process, and how you use your discs or how much stress you put it through is there are three factors for your disc for your spine to wear off and cause you problem in the future. Now, two of that, you have no influence. On. And one of them you do, how you use it. And that's a big deal. Now, wh why is it a big deal? Because um, unlike tires that you get from the factory, um, your disc is a living thing. Mm -hmm. Meaning, is constantly repair itself. And um, that sounds trivial because we know, okay, yeah, big deal. I'm, a li I'm alive. And my... <laughs> but what, it, what that means, if you give it a chance, if you put it in an environment that it can have the best chance of repairing itself, that means that it's going to last you longer and be with you longer. That's why no tire lasts 70 years, but many discs last 70 years. Okay, if it wasn't repairing itself, the whole idea is here, repair versus wear and tear. It's a fight. It's a it's a it's a eternal battle between in all Absolutely. your tissue. Absolutely. And I think a, a big point for me, um, undergoing the world of medicine, you know, you get older, and I know that I was not very kind to my body. Mm -hmm. I was very active. I did a lot of things that I felt invincible at the time. And while I feel okay right now, knock on wood, I know what I did to myself and what I potentially set myself up for. So I'm doing a lot of things to see if I can counteract some of those poor decisions I made when I was young and growing and I had right. that fluid in my discs those brand well, new feel, tires. I feel like there's even two sides to that because while, yeah, you did a lot of damage, maybe like potential, Probably. a little bit of damage by being aggressive with yourself. Also, what if you're just sitting there and not really doing anything? Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's a good balance. I'm happy you mentioned that, Amanda. You know, we have a very nice video on YouTube. If anybody's interested, it's called A Natural History of Spine. I know mm -hmm. you guys have watched it, but I still want to share it here. Bear with me. Imagine, let's say spine performance is 100%. Are you able to see my screen? Yep. And let's say the age you're born as a baby, and hopefully in the age of 100 years old, peacefully, we will die. That's a nap. Obviously, when we are born, our spine has 0% function, right? Mm -hmm. The baby cannot even stand up. And when we are dead, it's very clear that our spine has no function. So <laughs> we start at zero, we end at zero. Now, you guys are familiar with, but entertain me. When is the maximum uh, capacity, function, performance of the spine and why? Amanda, what, when do you think our spine is at its maximum capacity? I know you have watched this many times, but Yeah, still. it's at the maximum capacity, like between ages 12 and 16. But why? That's just how it is. <laughs> yes, that's there's, the, there's a you couple can't say, of that's how genetic is. Uh, 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 Alyssa, um, uh, why is that what Amanda said is true? And what evidence do we have for it? 
the no i don't have the evidence for you and i know you're gonna get it for me it doesn't have something to do with like bone growth right. infusion or something like that densities and where oh. along with the wear and tear too and until just the maximum then, capacities of your spine but. Mm -hmm. yeah, until then our spine's still growing and uh, but that usually right after the puberty our physique is set yep and i'll agree with that yeah your body doesn't have to spend the resources to grow. It spends the resources to maximize the capacity. And the evidence we have for that is just go and watch Olympic gymnasts. How old are they? Young. How old? Most 14, of them 14. 14 to 18, probably on average. 18 is too old already. Too old? Okay. Yeah, 14 to 16. 16. But but they have to start training by the time they are nine, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. And then at 12, they become professional. At 14, they perform at that level. And Olympic gymnasts, I'm not talking about other sports, that is 18 years old, it's, they're too old. But why are football uh, players, what in the United States we call football, the rest of the world they call I don't know what they call that. They call it American football. But why aren't they in their teens? They're usually early, uh, uh, you know, 18, 19, 20, but professional ones are in early 20s. Why is that 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 doesn't, that this formula doesn't apply to them? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the sport in which they're playing. The gymnastics, we want them to be as flexible, limber, small, and petite to mm -hmm. do the best they can for performing. Whereas in football, that is the exact opposite type of body build and form that you want mm -hmm. for that. You want big, you want grown, you want muscle Strong. mass, you want at your peak of, well, I shouldn't even say peak, not necessarily your spine peak, but more so your muscular, your top dog. Yeah, that, that, that for me is the biggest difference on the sports yeah, level. Not even mental. Football is strategy. Your brain has to control those muscles. Your muscle, yeah. your joints at maximum, yes, you need to build some muscle as well and so on, additional muscle. I give you that. But your brain has to control those muscles. It's the strategy. And that takes a lot longer. So that's for that reason the um, Olympic... Um, now, athlete for gymnastic are in their early teens, and the football and the sport like f basketball, volleyball, football, anything that requires you to control those muscles and you have a little additional mass in their early 20s. But let's agree that any somewhere between 10 and 20, you're at peak. Mm -hmm. But that peak is not the same for everybody. Meaning that what Amanda mentioned play a role here. You have to do something. You have to entertain that. You have to put those muscle, those joint to use, mm -hmm. but certain in a certain way to build higher capacity. Like you have to fill the tank. The more you fill the tank, your hundred percent here is different for you and for somebody else who's just sitting on a uh, literally on a the couch and playing uh, uh, now computer. Mm -hmm. Now, what is very important already here, you see that most of the people, they have to lose. Actually, I do believe it's even lower than 25. I think once you fall below 20, 15%, that is where you become dependent on other people to do things for you. So this episode is about how to prevent spine surgery. Well, the best way to spy, to prevent spine surgery is understanding the only thing you have influence is how you use your spine, mm -hmm. number one, meaning don't overuse it. Number two, that your maximum body's capacity is when you're in your teens. Try to achieve the highest level of performance and capacity and what you can have in your early age, let the let the kids go and play. That is what play is. Mm -hmm. Let them uh, be uh, uh, use those muscles and uh, build uh, uh, stronger bones and so on. 
No. I think that if I say something, you just mentioned the one thing I was waiting for you to say is the building of the stronger bones. Now, yeah. without a doubt, we learn a lot of how spine is connected to every other part of your body and how even I get people saying, what kind of supplements can I take? What vitamins can I take? What can I do? And most of the time, the simplest answer is just have a healthy diet. Healthy diets lead to good circulation, good circulation leads to positive outcomes mm -hmm. and the things as small as just that losing the weight, keeping all of that off of your joints is a number one way that I've seen people being able to prevent some of these things are just staying healthy. Right. It's amazing. And especially with the spine in the spine and, and, and joint, obviously there are lots of factors that, but in the spine and joint, it's about the peak pressure on the joint, on the cartilage. That mm -hmm. what causes maximum damage. Like, see, every time you brake, you use the same amount of the energy in your car, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Every time you brake, you lose the same amount of energy than if you go head to head, hit a wall at 60 miles an hour. Imagine you're 60 miles an hour, mm -hmm. and you hit a wall, what happened? What happens? You die. Okay. But every time you break from 60 miles an hour to stop, you are losing this absolutely same amount of the energy. But over a longer period of yeah. time, energy over the time that is now peak energy. What does that mean? You literally, let's say something simple. You jog, you run on asphalt mm -hmm. barefoot. Yep. Versus you run on a beach, on a sandy, on grass. You run with good running shoes versus not good running okay. shoes. You distribute the same energy over a more period of time. And exactly that what happened in a long period of time. You hit a wall with your car or you brake. Use your brakes. Please. You and and we know what the outcome of one versus another is. Mm -hmm. But as well, let's put the same analogy. You always drive high speed and then you brake. You drive high speed and you brake. You drive high speed and you brake. Versus you just use it in a coordinated, in a in a in a, a harmonical way. Meaning, so certainly we need our body is made for walking, for activity, for um, for sport and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then, if you overuse it, then you're going to just achieve the opposite. We talked about that. People who do professional athletics, their joint and spine is 20 years older than they are. Do you know what I mean, um, uh, Amanda? You yeah. that? So in, in your family, I'm sure there are lots of kids they do that, like they do sport, they stop everything else. And sport is all they do. And my son started doing football. After one month, he quit because it was hard on his body. No, no, it was not hard on his body. It just was hard. Four <laughs> times a week, four times a week, did not something like three, four hours a day, every weekend, you know, and now, many of these kids, they are peer pressured by the parent, by maybe by the father who wanted to be an athlete, but never was. And now they push them. These kids have no fun. But they have <laughs> to do that because, you know, the peer pressure and so on. If something is not fun, if your body is not having fun with it, if you're sore every time you do that, you know, that's your body is telling you that's too much for you. Mm -hmm. And yes, you to a certain point, you want to push your body gently. But if it stops being fun, then your body is telling you something. That I love it because, again, I come from a world of sports. And I come from a world of people telling me, Alyssa, it's mind over matter. And I am running. I'm dying. I'm tired. And they say, no, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah. But you put me in a situation mm -hmm. where... I'm having fun. I'm determined to get to the end goal. 
you're not stopping me. Mm -hmm. It does not matter if I am tired and I'm about to puke and I've got a broken bone. If I'm having fun and I'm doing it, oh man, there's, there's literally no stopping. But if you tell me to go run a mile and then I'm done, mm, nope, within 200 meters, I would be feeling like I need to stop. Like yeah. all of a sudden I'm getting a cramp here and I'm huffing and puffing and I think I'm going to pass out. But it is that, miraculous. Yeah. Well, that is, that is as well. The, but what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to say here, um, we in, especially in the United States, more than any other country, we put so much emphasis on athletic that we reset that natural thing that your body has. Meaning that, you know, your body naturally knows literally how much to eat. Your body, believe it or not, naturally knows how much to do and when to get rest. It makes you tired. It makes you sleepy. That means your body needs sleep. It makes you want to drink pickles or uh, juice or pickle water because you're short of sodium. In a study, they put kids and they gave them only natural food. And they measured in, their, in those kids' blood and they observed them what they eat. Your body naturally eats what it needs. One of our problem is we fool our body. We fool our, um, our, 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 what our body is made by adding artificial you know, um, uh, flavors and so on. We fool our body because naturally our body knows in that study they put only natural food on the table and kids only ate what they really needed nobody overate but then when they put this uh the, the artificial flavors and all this processed food mm -hmm. and so on everybody um, you know went the wrong way and it was no correlation so sport kids love to play don't they mm -hmm. and then uh, but you know you take that and now all of a sudden you give them additional incentives you know to overdo it go do more and more and more and so on and then you reset their natural level of then when they are tired when they are when their joint tell them to, to stop they don't mm -hmm. and then you have the problem of the athletic in the united states that is taken out of what nature wants. It's about how much money uh, the, the TV can make on a sport and people are striving to get there. These kids, college, they play in college. Yes, they get a free education, which I think is a totally perverted thing. But then by the time they are 30, they need a knee replacement. <laughs> and they are 40, four of their joints are artificial. Right. So pretty much one of the ways to prevent spine surgery is just limit, Over know your body's limits and don't overdo it. Don't push right. yourself. Like, I, I don't think Dr. Rossi is coming off at all. If don't play sports right. or don't be active as children, don't play. Like that's but not the message whatsoever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Just there's, the opposite. there's a balance there somewhere. Just the opposite. I think the kids, you should uh, enforce kids natural tendency to play one is the what is one of the best games uh, amanda uh, you like to play as a child oh man as a child i didn't really like play sport games and stuff i mostly Tag, played like kickball hide and go see no i was not that kid no. i'm not running i would play like barbies <laughs> oh, okay i did yeah. that too but... play like house <laughs> acting stuff no, as a child, actually, I was not very athletic. No red light, green light? No, no, you, I would not be doing that. We went to Ben Friends. We so probably <laughs> one of the most favorite game in the whole world for all kids is hide and seek. Oh, and yeah. That's hide and seek and tag. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hide and seek is a big one. Okay. What do they have in common? One Walk. has to taste the other, find the other. Yeah. Walking. Yeah. yeah. Lots of walking, lots of running, moderate running, short short episode of running, not running 40 kilometers or 23 miles. Right. Short episode of running and lots of walking. They yeah. have to come. And that come natural. You put 
bunch of cops of wolves and they start, you know, they, they attacking each other, play fighting, because that's part of their nature. They run around, same thing with a human. If you watch children naturally in the natural habitat, what they do, we just have to enforce it and promote it, not put them, give them something that they are happy to sit down on a couch or a, a chair and play 12 hours like my son on a computer. <laughs> yeah. Now, That's impressive in itself. I'm not going to lie. I could not do that. Not but that I get a headache. Not that I am uh, so telling it, people to go try it, but. Oh, well, listen, I know all about it. And I get, I, I used to, there was a, when, when computers came around, there was a computer program called Doom. It's a dumb, you kill monsters kind of things. I come from work home and I worked a lot at 10 p.m. I play Doom until next morning, six o'clock. I have to go to work. These things are addictive. Very. Okay. I can't, and, I can't understand. So you play your game, your morning game for 12 hours straight oh, without sleep. No, I can't imagine. No, I can't imagine I can't. playing it for hours. I can't. So what about adults? Like how can adults prevent spine surgery? We've talked about sports a lot now. What about like physical therapy, strengthening other, other parts of your body than just your muscles, like your muscles that you see? So I, I put this for a reason now. We understood that with the good childhood habits, you build more capacity in your spine and with healthy adult habits, you move the curve to the right, meaning that you can get more mileage. You can go more without needing a spine surgery. And let's say that red line is where you need a spine surgery. Now, your question is specific about, can you repeat your question, Amanda? Physical yeah, how can adults prevent spine surgery? Or what are some actions that they can take so they don't need spine surgery as soon? Well, see, most of the time, by the time you need physical therapy, you're already on the down spiral. Let's say something happens, you know, without the adult, healthy adult, you, you know, you did, had a good childhood, but now you're only doing crazy things like, you know, the, the free climbing and bungee jumping and skydiving or, or sitting on a couch and just eating chip, potato chips. But sometimes something happens. That something is already I means something went wrong. And that is where you need phys that where you go to physical therapy. We are not there yet. We want to prevent, we want to this take this curve, move it here. Mm -hmm. um, there is a good indication that dog owners live five to seven years longer than not dog owner. What is the first thing you do, Amanda, in the morning and in the evening when you go home? Walk my dog. Beautiful. You just, you just said that. Physical therapy comes after something has already went awry and mm -hmm. it's wrong. And we've yeah. actually talked, of, we've talked about this before, that walking is the best exercise that you can do for your body. Yeah, okay. and that is why the dog owners... Not the cat owners, but the dog owners live longer Nothing than wrong dog with the cats. Owners. Cat owners in 2024 are very new, <laughs> new types of cat owners. Actually, like they have special harnesses. My friends walk their cats. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I couldn't walk my cat. She wouldn't let okay, me. But I, I think tell you, your cat couldn't care less if you go walking with it or not. Oh no, that's actually very incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> like you could okay. not be further from the truth cat cassandra upstairs her cat Write that down add it to the topic list her cat yells at her to take a walk yeah he's very bossy cats love i mean they're they're that. animals like they want to be outside they want to have different they don't want to just look out the window i think to at, answer your question overall it just comes straight down to what dr bossy has that labeled as ha healthy habits as adults, yes. mm -hmm. which comes down to just what they say, 38 minutes of exercise three, four times a week, whether that's going out and taking a walk, 
whether that's gardening, doing the simple exercises, getting off the couch, moving your body. Right. Mm-hmm. That that is what we're talking about. And you by don't need a pet. Habits. Right. You can go bird watching. You don't you don't need a pet to find but, a reason to take a walk. But right. the but the cat but the dog make you if you have a dog and you don't walk them, it's brutal. It's just and you shouldn't have you a shouldn't dog. Have a dog. You shouldn't have a dog. But so, but for, for that reason, I think most of the people love their dogs enough to have the courtesy to walk them, and that make them walk. Yeah, that adds accountability seven years to your life. You're welcome. No, now you, now you need to start treating Lily with a little more respect. Yeah, because it's it's giving me seven more years with Amanda. Got that? <laughs> Yeah, you said lucky you for that one. Yeah, lucky you. <laughs> now, uh, so uh, we, we did not talk about, you know, going like uh, mountain biking, going 70 miles, a uh, mile an hour down the healthy habit. Healthy habit give you more of your spine life, reduce the chance that you need surgery or anything because it moves that up, you know, one of the things you are doing, I wrote here Inspired Spine, I should have put uh, IS Life, because one of the things you are talking, Amanda, is so-called Life Gym, right? Yep. Tell me about, tell us a lot. Life Gym make you less likely to need spine surgery. If you know what it is, good for you. If you don't, go to Amanda's webpage and uh, look it up, what Life Gym is. Explain to us what Life Gym is. So Life Gym is pretty much just using your normal life to exercise or like using the world as your gym. So doing small things like parking a little bit further away from the door. So then you have a longer walk to get inside or like carrying a basket instead of pushing a cart, walking your dog, gardening, doing small things that keep you more active. I like it. Because then it doesn't yeah. make it feel like you're you're taking on a big task. Yeah. Or I don't have to go exercise at the gym. Oh, you're telling me I can just take the stairs every day and that exactly this much. You know, that's what I need. I will openly admit that's what I need. Uh, yeah. yeah, it takes the pressure off. I think. No, but you know that is um, that what our body is made of. You know, doing activities that are moderate and that what keeps you going. Now. Let, let's see that actually the ridiculousness of that. You have a busy life, you eat unhealthy, you do unhealthy things, then you're in stress all the time. Then you go home, you pick up your uh, gym bag, and then you drive 20 minutes to a gym, and then you curl 500, 300, 100, 200 weights on here and there, destroy all your joint and you push your adrenaline, push you to do more Mm -hmm. and you're paying for it. Whereas my solution or Amanda's life gym solution is just walk or bike to the gym and just walk and bike back. Don't even go inside. You just save money. You're welcome again. (laughs) Uh, And another example, it doesn't really apply to everyone, but where I used to live, I was like, really close to the grocery store. If I Mm -hmm. walked to the grocery store, it actually took me as much time as it did for me to walk to my car, drive to the grocery store and then park my car. So sometimes you can save time too. I think maybe you just need to like put it out there that it's not strange. You know, I guess to me, my first thought is, well, I'm, I'm not walking to the grocery store Then I got to carry all this stuff back. And then I got to do this and that. Sometimes you just have to put that in your mind. Like, Hey, why not? You know, it's not that weird to right. see the benefits that you're getting and saving. You got to put it out there for people like me that just say, you know, it's not worth it. It's not logical at this time. Like, I let me go to the grocery store and grab my groceries. Mm-hmm. You break it down and you explain it. It actually makes a lot more sense. So, yeah, and, I'm with you on that. And you're spending more time, time outside, especially if you're doing it in the daylight. That actually increases, improves your moods, too. This is yeah. all in fact. This is this is not a trivial thing. People who spend more time outside and get natural light, their mood is much, much better. So now you know why I'm always in a bad mood. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe we need some more windows in the building. Or just take some picnic breaks outside for lunch or mm-hmm. something. I think you it's know. more than just windows. Dogs to the office. Natural light means that truly sun on your skin. Because we know that glasses, they filter lots of mm-hmm. uh, other certain areas of the light that we don't even see. Yep. But sometimes if you want to be happy, you will find a way to be happy. <laughs> Amanda is giving me some advice. <laughs> no, just sometimes if you say it out loud, it doesn't seem so weird, remember? Exactly. So uh, getting the most out of your spine and preventing spine surgery. So we have it here. Do activity, moderate activity, not excessive activity, have a healthy lifestyle. Your body is repairing itself all the time. Give it what it needs. Give the throughout trying to build the building. You have to have material to build the building. Good nutrition. Don't put too much weight. Weight reduction is always mm-hmm. important. And all of that comes to a point that you long before you do physical therapy, but then something happens. Now, medical professionals step in. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking, it took us a long time to get even before we need physical therapy. Now, somehow something happens. You, you didn't do things or you did things and still you had an accident or your genetic wasn't good. No, your spine is falling apart and you're very rapidly closing to where you, you can do nothing. Mm-hmm. I have been there a few times myself. Amanda, have you ever had back pain? Yeah, I've had back pain. Um, Can you describe your, your back pain? Yeah, I had like lower back pain, maybe sacroiliac joint pain, kind of felt like tight, pinching more on one side than the other. And it was when I wasn't doing a lot of um like yoga and stuff like that. I was doing a lot of sitting at work, sitting with my legs crossed, leaning over on one side more than the other. Just call um, me what out. About you, what about you, Alyssa? Have you had back pain? I have. I have had back pain to the point I fractured my lumbar when I was playing volleyball in college and got to do all that bracing. And I will tell you, it is one of the most debilitating pains you can have because it affects pretty much not only your spine, how you move, your muscles, how you sit, sleep, stand. Mm-hmm. I will say that was probably not fun. Not fun at all. Yeah, well, you're not even 50 years old. I not, know. Of you together are not 50 years old, and yet? Yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> Amanda is not happy now. Insert the tears here. We are getting older. Sadly, time doesn't wait for anyone. But still, you have a spine problem. You, that you just made the point that spine problem is a very, very common thing. Now, you have a spine problem for whatever reason, and uh, I'm not going to go talk about this uh, when other people provide spine surgery and you never catch up. But then there is a way here, up here, when you start having spine problem to reduce the stress to your spine and to improve its capacity to heal. And physical therapy is a proven fact. There is level one evidence doing physical therapy, put your spine on a better path to recover and highest level, level one is the highest, you know, the randomized blind, whatever study that tells you it, this really works. Okay. Now, but how does physical therapy work? We had actually an episode with a physical doctorate in a physical therapy that we talked about that numerous times. Please go and watch that. The great podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but Practically, the, the, uh, Alyssa or Amanda, to explain to me, well, how do you think physical therapy has the capacity to fix the problem or reduce the chance you need spine uh, surgery? Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of different reasons that could, that could be pulled. I mean, the number one way I try to convince my patients is I said this is the number one reason that or way that you can help treat your body from the inside out. Yeah, we can place a brace over you and give you some stability, sure. What does that do? It actually decreases your muscles. So the goal is here, let's give yourself the best stability that you can. Set yourself with the best, you know, muscles, health overall that you can. I mean, that's that's how I describe it to my patients in mm-hmm. layman's terms. I sure. would even say like if I were to describe, if I it were to be described to me, 
I would want someone to tell me I'm strengthening some muscles that I'm not strong enough in. And usually I think those are the muscles that we're not seeing. Yeah, absolutely. There are protective muscles too. Mm -hmm. When we think of muscles, we think of the ones that cause us to move and lift things and do excessive movements. And we forget that there are so many small, minute tendons, ligaments that are also in the bigger picture that have to be worked and exercised. And when someone needs physical therapy, it doesn't mean they're not strong. Most of the time they actually are very strong. Yeah. Most, a lot of times, like I see your patients that are gym going patients Mm -hmm. with huge muscles, very strong guys love to flex. And they (laughs) say, I'm not going to physical therapy. I go to the gym. Well, it's different. It's not the same. Gym is good to the moderate amount when you do it early on and you build capacity. But physical, no, we did a, I did a TikTok about that not long ago. When especially men go to gym, what are they training? Abs, arms, legs. Anything you see in the mirror. Yep. All the ones that they can flex. And the too gym bad. is too the bad. Gym, at the gym, every wall has the mirrors. Can- yeah. And I've been to physical therapy and there were no mirrors. Sorry, guys. <laughs> there were no mirrors at physical therapy. No, that, that's the point. When you go to gym, you train the muscle you see in the in the mirror there is none of those muscles that really are extremely important to your spine health are visible in the mirror mm-hmm. so iliopsoas where is iliopsoas deep in your belly multifidus orbis yeah you hear you that know. all the time yeah but no well, those, you know, the, the gluteal muscle, you see them. Do you want to build them for a fantastic butt? Uh, you see the biceps. They say, you know, that all the abs, the six pack and so on. And now guess what? All of a sudden you go to gym for that purpose alone. Instead of a life gym, you go to commercial, a totally absurd kind of gym to just build something you can show. And now... Your arms and legs can do things that your core body muscle cannot do. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. You know, I did a lot of lifting when I was in college. And the number one thing they taught us when it came to going to the gym was the balance. If you're going to work on the abs, you have to work on the back. If you're going to work on the hamstrings, you got to work on the quads or else you have a a dysfunction in your body. And that's kind of what we see a lot. If you work really hard on on the abs, but you don't work on your back muscles, then all of a sudden you say, "Why? well, I have a six pack, but I can't walk. <laughs> yep, absolutely. And so it, it comes back to that, that um, if you want to avoid this surgery, um, you should uh, definitely do physical therapy when you notice there is something going on. Many of our patients, we have to convince them they come, they want surgery, they want a quick fix. And in our protocol, we have a, they have done a really good job to identify um, the very, very few people who wouldn't benefit from physical therapy. And they, I'm talking about two to 5%. 95 to 98% of the people do benefit from physical therapy. And it really saddens me that I have to uh, sometimes treat them like children to put the medicine in a in a juice for them to take it. I, I tell so them, right. yeah, Spoonful, I tell them, spoon feed them. I tell them, oh no, no, we are going to do surgery, but we have to do physical therapy to make you recover better after the surgery. Or sometimes I have to tell them, oh, I, I absolutely want to. You have to create a report and uh, you know they, they have to trust you if they come and tell you i have done it in the past it doesn't work i don't want it if you talk to me about physical therapy i just walk out of here then you lost them then you cannot help them some you know half of the time i tell them oh we are no we are going to do surgery but we have to do it so you have more muscle i'm not destroying which is true i'm not destroying those muscles because after regular surgery, you're destroying all this. It doesn't really matter. But in after our surgery, we don't destroy them. So they help you to recover. But I'm just preparing you for the surgery. The other half, if there are conspiracy theories, I tell them, you know, these damn insurances. If you don't do physical therapy, 
That's the not a conspiracy the- theory either. That is real. Well, guys, that it's is kind of real. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of justified because what you're saying isn't untrue. Doing the physical okay. therapy does help with the recovery. And there's a reason why the insurance companies also no, I'm not lying to them. There's studies but, that it works. Exactly. I'm not lying to them, but listen, I'm a surgeon. I'm a you I'm a car dealer. And I'm telling you, we should not do surgery. We should do physical therapy. I'm the car dealer who tells you, don't buy this car. I, I mean, how much more honest can I be? But I have to incentivize them not to do surgery, right? Well, the, the tough part is with physical therapy is it goes both ways. You need to do your physical therapy. You like there's a you schedule can't just walk through the door. Yeah, you have to do it. You have to have it in your head that the physical therapy is going to work. Because it'd be like having a gym membership, you're paying $100 a month and you're not going. That's you have to want it. Hey, maybe I'm going to the gym and I'm sitting in the sauna. That works, right? Got big muscles. Or, 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 or go pick up or go pick up partners, you know. That is sometimes why, why people go to gym, you know? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Or, or, I, or I, might a, I might get a gym membership. That's how we can do it. <laughs> do it. No, no I have heard. I, is that true that I have heard that that's one of the places pick up people, you know, have date and so on? As I, a woman, I would love it if men do not talk yeah, to I was me say, while I, I am exercising. I am the gal that looks like a tornado ran through them when they are at the gym. I'm not attracting anybody. Yeah, when I when I go to yoga, I'm not I'm not going there to pick up a partner. I'm going there to do yoga. I'm proud of you. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, well, considering that there are 95% of the people in the yoga are female. There's actually quite a few men in my yoga studio that go regularly. Is that right? So so man, for every man who's listening, if you really want to go and find attractive woman, don't go to gym, go to yoga. Well, I think if you were really listening, I think you missed you would have actually heard me say to not do that. Do not come to Amanda's yoga, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Everybody, do not go to Amanda's yoga place, but do go to a yoga place. There you go. Because the ratio man to woman is in your favor. Or respect the women. Let the women work out in peace. Just let us live our normal life. How about that? Just be respectful. Hey, I'm incentivizing them to go to yoga. Yeah, no. No, this is a bad incentivizing. Let's move on. Let's move on. (laughs) Take the advice from the women on how to pick up women. Please. I love it. Uh, Any last? I say it. Yeah, how else? How else? I think we've kind of covered it besides the more broad things that like managing your stress, of course, having a healthy diet, but. I think that all still ties into just the Norm. holistical yep, healthy overall lifestyle. healthy lifestyle. We know we've talked about mental health connection to physical health. Mm-hmm. We don't need to go into that again. We know that. Yeah. Just take care of yourself. Easier said than done. But I believe in you guys. So there's only one more thing I wish to cover that certainly with any kind of treatment, you can get away from the cliff, this red line and move to the yellow line and even maybe better, you know, once you have a problem like that, if you create those habits, you can actually improve that. But going down the hill, unfortunately, is inevitable. Now, depends how steep of that hill you want to go down. That's right. That's right. And, And find hobbies that you can do when your spine capacity is falling down. Mm -hmm. Good point. and have uh, the, now don't seek that surgery so you can go and do marathon. You want to uh, you know, avoid surgery, have hobbies that makes you happy. That if you cannot uh, really do all those climbing and uh, the, the seven days safari and so on, that you have other hobbies that uh, keeps you happy and. One of the things I see as well, what I really want to show is that when people come with unrealistic expectation, now somebody start having some problem and they come to me and I fix the problem now and 
it's 10 years later or many, many years later. And they want to be back where they were before they had all the years ago. Yeah, many, many years ago. And expectation that you should be able to go back and do things that you did 20 years ago, that actually put your spine, meaning if you act on it, Mm -hmm. put your spine of go down the hill even faster. So one of the last thing you can do to prevent spine surgery is have realistic expectation about your body and your spine. It's a great point. Mm -hmm. And the, the like... If you're 70 years old, and these are actual examples, and you want me to do spine surgery for you so you can go and have you run in marathon again, well, you're setting yourself for a very clearly for future failures. Now, I, there are some, uh, some body physiologically able to do that, but I can't say for sure for the vast majority of the body physiologies, you are overstressing your resources and you are setting yourself for failure if you do high athletic, high athletic things that are made for people in their 20s, in your 50s, 60s, and 70s. That's just unrealistic expectation. Hmm. Okay. So uh, that sort of covers most of the things we want to talk about. I think so. I think it was a good job. Yeah. I touched on a lot of things. Overall, just make healthy decisions. Mm-hmm. Stay active nicely. Drink your water. Get your sleep. Be kind to yourself. Amen to that. Go, and go to yoga classes. Thank you guys for watching. This was Essence of Medicine. Today, we talked about how to prevent spine surgery. I'm Amanda Armagast. I'm Melissa Haber. And I'm Dr. Abbasi for Essence. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thank you.